Come on, you knew I was gonna talk about this eventually. <laughs> Let's talk about Nia Jax. What's going on everybody? It's your buddy, it's your pals, Pass Phoenix, the YWC Rally Check, here with a little bit of a different sort of video. No, it's not that different, it's not that unique, it's not that special, somebody coming up on YouTube and talking about the train wreck that is Nia Jax. Now, for those of you that are enjoying the Super Bowl, you'll see this later, I hope you have a good Super Bowl. I really don't give a shit about the Super Bowl other than the halftime heat thing, which is going to be pretty cool, but I figured now's as good a time as any to do the, uh, to get my, you know, fill in the blank, you know, X person needs to do video on X topic, and everybody's done a video or so on the Nia Jax thing, so I'm going to try and do this as level-headed as I possibly can, because I'm not here to be a mean person, despite what some of you may have heard of me, hello Shannon, hello Richard, I see you, um, I'm not really, don't, I don't really have any notes, I have some references here for some stuff that I'm going to talk about, but I really just want to... I just want to touch on the Nia Jax thing, because the Nia Jax thing has been going on for a long, long time. And for people that have been watching me for a long time, or listening to me for a long time, talk about the Nia Jax thing. Um, you've seen me go through a couple different frames of thought on the matter. I mean, when she came up, I didn't think she was ready to come up, but it's like one of those, eh, she might surprise us. I mean, I didn't think she was really much of anything in NXT. NXT was where the women's revolution started, where we really started seeing women's wrestling, and here's this woman that basically comes in, and I say this in the nicest way possible, to be the women's division's big show. To be the rock that everybody else ran into and could go over uh, as they went on to other things, as they went on to larger feuds, as they went on to, you know, fight for championships, etc. And then they brought her up to the main roster. And it was pretty much the same. And it got, you know, you took something that was already blah. I mean, people come up to the main roster from NXT and they get watered down and and hampered and all that sort of thing. Sorry if my voice is, is shitty. A lot of pepper with dinner, so my sinuses are kind of fucking with me. Plus, people upstairs are trying to enjoy the game. So, uh, if I'm talking really low tone, uh, that's uh, that's what's going on. She came up to the main roster, and I tried, I really did. For those of you that listen to a lot of my uh, collaboration videos with Kristen and Guapa, you know Kristen and I talk quite a lot about the women's division specifically and who's doing what and, you know, the some of the social things that go into that as well. And I looked at Nia Jax, and people were shitting on her, and, you know, there's that, there's that line of, oh, she's only there because she's The Rock's, you know, cousin, niece, whatever the hell she is. And yes, that's a thing. Char with Charlotte, it's a thing. With, you know, it is a thing. I can't pretend that it's not. But I'm like, okay, guys, let's let's give it a shot. She's not the greatest. She's not there to be putting on five-star wrestling matches. Just give her a shot. And eventually, I got to the point where, and I'm not in any position to talk about anybody's size. Anybody that's seen me more than this little square knows that I'm not exactly a small person myself. So I am the last person that's going to come up here on YouTube and call Nia Jax a fat chick. So when I say WWE booked her like a fat chick, uh, I don't mean her herself. I mean the way she was used, the style that she was given, uh, etc. I mean, they dress her in things that are not flattering, which is not her fault. Uh, and I mean, they put her in a match style that is basically big show. Everything I do is either an Irish whip, because you couldn't Irish whip me, because I'm bigger than you, or it's some version of me landing on you because I'm big and isn't that terrible. It makes you think about, sorry, makes you think of people like Viscera, people like Rikishi, people like Yokozuna, etc. And while that is a factor, and while if I was as big as some of those guys and I was in a match, I would sit on you, because you wouldn't be able to get up. It's not a flattering, it's not a flattering thing, and I really tried. I really did, to be the nice guy, the open-minded guy, and think, no, she's not that great, but look at the position that they've put her in, whatever. And then they started pushing her. She didn't change from that, but they started pushing her towards the title, towards this and that. And then you get into the social, political end of it, where she become, you know, she doesn't have to be a good wrestler. She's a good symbol for all other big girls out there. They can still do their thing. And I'm going to address that in a minute. Now, they didn't address at the same time 
the fact that, you know, yes, people get mistreated all the time for their for their size and being bigger than the world thinks they should be, etc. But they went the other way and had her make fun of Alexa Bliss for being small, but that's okay. That's not got anything to do with Nia Jax. That's just got to do with WWE representing things that happen in the real world that piss me off. Um, and they had her going over people and going over people and going over people. And then eventually you got to the Becky Lynch thing. Becky Lynch thing set everybody on fire. The Becky Lynch thing, um, where she knocked her out and broke her face and, you know, swollen eyes face. We lost our one of our main events for Survivor Series and one of the probably the biggest star in the company right now and Becky Lynch became this person that had to sit on the shelf and was taken away from us just as we were starting to get her. Um, and there was that backlash of we lost this talent that we like. There's this backlash of we lost this match that we were looking forward to, but there's also this backlash of you're dangerous and you're hurting people. And that's, that was the thing. It's, there was a whole bunch of apologists out there. And yes, once again, Shannon, I see you. Um, they were saying, oh, you're just upset you didn't get the match. Oh, you're just upset that, you know, it, it happened to be somebody you like. If it was Lana or if it was Dana Brooke or whatever, uh, you wouldn't care so much or so, something along. Oh, you're picking on her because she's big. You're picking on her because she's a person of color, et cetera, which is absolute bullshit. We're picking on her or picking on her because she's injuring people, because that's when everything started to surface. Now, is she hurting people? Yes, absolutely. Um, does it have anything to do with the fact that she's a bigger person? No, but if you've got 300 pounds behind your missing punch, it's probably gonna hurt more than a punch from a one or 200 pound person that notwithstanding are we picking on her because she's a person of color no we're not picking on her because she's a person of color we're picking on her because she's hurting people oh yes um are we picking on her for being the rock's niece maybe but that's not unique to her i mean the usos have dealt with the same thing the um roman reigns <laughs> i mean fuck's sake uh roman reigns has gotten far more of that than she has but you know certain activists won't tell you that but it was funny because becky lynch while i do want to say that it wasn't because it just happened to somebody popular somebody that we really love it was the lightning rod for lots of other things to start coming up that i don't think we necessarily heard of before so before you tell me and i for a while, I had just randomly heard that she had taken out all four horsewomen at some point, and Asuka. Now, Asuka was doing intergender wrestl wrestling with men in Japan, where they're doing extreme strong style, so if they're hurting, if she's able to hurt Asuka, then that's something we should set up to take notice. But to do this, I went through, and I gotta give a lot of credit to Reddit, and Squared Circle, and... Uh, PW Torch and No DQ and What Culture, because this is where I've picked all these references from. These are not things that I'm going to sit here and say that I randomly remembered. These are things that I, you know, hey, I don't remember that. What happened? Okay, see the little clip. See somebody's turned it into a GIF. See somebody wrote an element of it. Sorry, I wrote an article about it after the fact. So in the, in what I've been able to find, she caused an undetermined eye injury to Emma back in 2017 now emma is you know we talk about the potential of wrestlers the rest of them are still on the roster emma's not anymore but at the time we were all starting to like emma emma was like the the cool ass bitch too cool for school before they did the whole emmalina bullshit so that probably took a lot of really good matches away from us now charlotte <laughs> charlotte people have missed miss uh, uh people have different opinions of her like mismatched opinions i want to say some people are getting a bit sick of her some people think she's getting like a roman reigns type push some people think she's there because of her last name which may or may not be a thing you can't deny the fact that she has been through the ringer and can can do it most people on the roster are having their best matches with charlotte right now but in one instance we have charlotte going for a moonsault naya naya literally stepping back from the moonsault so that um so that charlotte face planted to the ground on the outside of the ring so not only could have fucked up her face caused a concussion caused a neck injury whatever that was it's nasty and like i say uh reddit squared circle has a thing that i'll direct all you guys to it's basically like a history of dangerous acts by nia Jax or something like that 
she lands on her face and it's it's not quite as bad as the Lita suicide dive back in the day where she sort of scorpioned over, but it's pretty comparable. There's also in another match with Charlotte where she goes for a shoulder breaker, but doesn't, she's got her in that, in that shoulder breaker position that sort of looks like a tombstone, but at the very last second you sort of turn to one side so that all that's getting hit is the shoulder. She doesn't turn her. So she drops her head first on her knee and then to the ground. And so, so if one impact to the face and head wasn't enough, how about two in one shot? She tossed Bailey uh, in some sort of throw maneuver type thing, tore Bailey's shoulder muscle up enough that Bailey missed the entire time frame around Survivor Series. Uh, in a similar match with Bailey, she goes for an elbow drop, a running elbow drop, which is you know on Bailey who's down on the ground. She doesn't stop the elbow drop, even though Bailey sits up and sort of curls over because she's already kind of fucked up and drops that full weight elbow on the back of Bailey's head. Now this, not to be mean, not to be mean, but when you are 300 whatever pounds she is, you cannot be dropping an elbow point on the back of somebody's neck while they're already trying to pull themselves up and out of an injured spot. You just can't do it. Um, she went for a backbreaker on Asuka. And you can't make this shit up. She left her wrong knee up. So as, as you know, backbreaker is basically like a front slam, except you've lifted one of your knees so that they go over your knee. Um, what she did was she left the other knee up, which was to the other side and not affecting anything, and planted the knee that she was supposed to be using for the backbreaker. And so basically she ended up loosely dropping Asuka straight to the ground. And that was enough to give her a concussion. Like I say, Asuka, who's been in Japan doing the strong style thing with the guys probably ragdolled halfway around the ring. I'm pretty sure somebody told me that she's had a hardcore match with Kenny Omega. I haven't seen it, but I've heard it. It's a thing. Whatever. But like... This is somebody who's been ragdolled, been thrown around. If, you, if you've missed up a move so much that a simple front slam has given her a concussion, you fucked up somewhere. Um, at the Evolution pay-per-view, I heard about this. She caused Selena Vega a concussion. Um, initially, it was thought that she had dropped her in some sort of slam and sort of landed on her head, which would be terrifying. Again, size does matter sometimes. Uh, but it actually wasn't that. It was the, um, the very careless way in which she eliminated her because she does, like I say, the the big show Mark Henry's feats of strength and power to her. She's got the strength, um, but she does that whole like gorilla press and tosses her like out over the crowd. Dropped her from the ring, from, from a fully elevated position in the ring to flat on the ground outside the ring in such a way that she caused her not only a concussion, but a broken nose. Um, she tried for some sort of slam on a leg. And I mean... Not to get, not to again bring the size thing into it, but Zelina Vega of all people. That's unless you count Casey Castanzaro, who's not even technically on the NXT roster yet. Zelina Vega is by far the smallest talent you've got. You shouldn't be doing that with her. And I mean, the the choice of who she was eliminating isn't hers. Obviously, she didn't book the Battle Royal. I'm not saying that. Let me be clear. But you can't just fucking chuck her in such a way like because we've seen big, you know, chuck out spots by the men by the women etc but like to to implant her face into the rampway because you see her she does make it all the way to the rampway in such a way that all, breaks her nose and concusses her is is not okay it's just not like i'm not saying that nia Jax is a bad person she's just a bad wrestler and she's not getting any better um i'm not sure when but around uh, around the time of backlash apparently she popped alexa bliss's shoulder blade shoulder out of place twice and no idiots it wasn't the simple thing that she does with her elbow where she pops her elbow forward and it looks like it's broken and she's got a double jointed thing so she does a thing in certain matches literally dislocated her shoulder twice in one match in one match that's fucked up and again it's that whole like don't put her like don't put her in the ring at all because i don't want her in the in the in the company anymore but don't put her in the ring with some of the smallest people on your roster if you know she's doing stuff like this the ember moon thing is interesting the ember moon thing is really interesting because we didn't see this and we didn't hear it from ember moon it blew up on social media because of Ember Moon's husband. And now, for people to be backing Ember Moon's husband, because this is the guy that goes out there and wrestles in a t-shirt that says, I'm the king of the black women. I'm sure he's popular. But he went on social media because he was concerned about his wife having to face Nia Jax on a particular night. 
and alluded to a previous event that was not specified. Uh, but he went on social media and basically said, oh, for the love of God, please don't let her hurt my wife again. Now, this one is vague and it's not specific and he could be blowing things way out of proportion. But we live in the age of the Internet. We live in the age of if somebody botches a spot, it's on Twitter immediately. It's a GIF on Instagram immediately. Da, 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 da. So to have the Ember Moon thing come along... And Ember Moon's pretty damn popular, so you figure anything that happens to her would be publicized in some way, shape, or form. So to have somebody as popular and as well-liked as, as she is have, have an injury happen to her that was never brought to our attention um, just means that we can look over this whole list that I'm talking about right now and think, okay, these are only the ones we know about. Um, it, it's, it's terrifying. It's, the Ember Moon one is on the list basically to, for, so that I can come here and tell you guys, think about all the potential people that aren't on the list, that aren't that don't even make this list because maybe it didn't make a splashy enough headline. Maybe she did injure somebody that nobody cares about, like a Lana or an Eva Marie or a Dana Brooke, which, let's be real, those are the jobbers of your division. I mean, Eva Marie's not even there anymore. But hate to be the guy that dampers all the opinions and brings in a little bit of a moral quandary here, just because they're jobbers doesn't suddenly mean that them getting hurt is okay. It's not a case of, oh, even Marie broke her neck? Awesome, she's a jobber, we don't need her anyway. But Asuka, oh, her getting hurt was... No, when you're talking about stacking bodies, and that's literally what Nia Jax is doing with this record, um... It's terrible, and it's and it's and it's terrifying, and so every name we hear now from here on in, we have to hear. Okay, this name is this, but how many have we not even heard about? Obviously, the Becky Lynch thing was was the catalyst for the big outrage, because on the one hand, this was the big story that made all the splashy headlines and sort of dug up all these other incidents up out of the woodwork, but also it proved that nothing's going to change. Nothing is going to change because WWE, not Nia Jax, I'm going, to, I'm going to sort of go out on a little side reference here. WWE have continually reinforced to Nia Jax that if you keep fucking up and you keep hurting people, we will reward you and we will make it a storyline and we will use that mistake to make you look like even more of a badass, which will put you on more TV with more people so that you can injure more people. Now, Becky Lynch, it, that that's the thing. Like... <laughs> She shouldn't have gotten a shot at pay-per-view. Like, yeah, Becky Lynch had her shot when, when she came back at whatever pay-per-view it was, TLC. And she got her shot on, in at, at Nia Jax in the back. But, I mean, even that is giving more, more credence to Nia Jax than she deserves. You got Becky Lynch, who's going to tie it up at WrestleMania. Who, sorry, backtrack a little bit. Not, uh, Becky Lynch, who was the champion of SmackDown at the time. No reason at all that she needs to, pe to petty herself with Nia Jax. She's got Oscar Ronda Rousey to deal with. It's all good. And goes on, and like I say, she's dealing with Oscar. She's dealing with Ronda Rousey. She's dealing with potentially Charlotte. She's on the same level as a Bailey or a Sasha Banks, uh, an Alexa Bliss, etc. She shouldn't have even gotten that five seconds on TV, is my point. She took the hugest mistake that royally fucked with WWE's <coughs> big plan going into Survivor Series, and she was ultimately rewarded for it. So even if we say right now, hey, we're going to punish her, we're going to do everything going forward, we know WWE's not going to do that because they've shown a pattern of rewarding her mistakes, and somebody's going to get fucked up more. And not that it's as serious because, because the guy was wrestling literally two days later. Her latest victim, and I will say victim in, in the smallest sense, um... She had her bit in the Royal Rumble. Uh, in the guys' Royal Rumble, I should say. And she got into the Royal Rumble by beating the ever-loving fuck out of R-Truth. Now, and I'm not going to sit here and say, oh my god, how dare they do that to R-Truth. I mean, R-Truth's a goofy gimmick, for the most part. And if you're going to have her steamroll over somebody really quickly, I'm sure the comedic value of her steamrolling over R-Truth to get to to get to the Royal Rumble was fine but apparently just in the couple of seconds it took her to take him out in the rampway the guy twisted his foot and hurt his face so here's the deal here's the next point if they are as rumored going to use Nia Jax of all people as the catalyst for some intergender wrestling there's two problems with that the matches are going to be shit because it's Nia Jax 
and she's nearly now doubled the amount of people on the roster that she can hurt. Now, people might think I'm being dramatic in saying that. There are smaller people on the men's roster as well. You've got somebody like a, like a Sami Zayn or even Seth Rollins to a certain degree who are not the biggest guys on the roster or who are very some somewhat popular for not being the biggest guys on the roster. Seth Rollins getting out there and you know I'm I'm the the underdog that's going to go slay the beast. He makes it part of his character. It's all good. Now if you get an errant shot at somebody like a Seth Rollins and break his nose. There's one of your WrestleMania matches. Go I'm not saying they're going to put Nia Jax versus fucking Seth Rollins, but I just, I just want you guys to sort of get an idea of what I'm thinking about. So A, the matches are going to suck. B, She's doubled the amount of people that she can fuck with. <laughs> can you imagine if she just goes in there like and and breaks Finn Balor's spine or something, or just like squashes the skull of Kalisto or something? Now I'm being a little bit belligerent when I say that, and I'm sorry. But also, the other more serious end of this is I'm a huge fan of the potential experimenting with intergender wrestling. I think it's a really cool thing. The little bit of intergender wrestling that I've seen here and there would be fine. When we saw the stare down, and you're going to laugh at me, I really don't care. When we saw this, the stare down on SmackDown between Becky Lynch and John Cena, yeah, it, should it be for anything? No. Should it be at a big pay-per-view? No. But like even on a random episode of SmackDown, would that be a fun thing to watch? Yes. Would you have like maybe Charlotte versus Daniel Bryan? Sure, would you let Bailey face, like, somebody from the New Day, or whatever? Sure, Sasha Banks takes on Finn Balor. Cool, good match. They could build a story. They were, t they were tag team partners for the Mixed Match Challenge, and now they don't agree, or some other bullshit. Like, for something as important as the potential of intergender wrestling, you're picking entirely the wrong person to to spearhead that forward not not to mention as i say once again now you've doubled the pool of people that she can injure i am no longer willing to be as nice as some people are oh you know what she, she really was just was brought up too soon she needs to go back to the performance center she needs to go back to nxt first of all don't put her on nxt because we like nxt don't put her on nxt because we're not going to get nxt level matches anymore can you imagine how wasted... I, I, I mean, you guys know me. I take the piss out of Bianca Belair a lot because I think her gimmick is shit. But she had a good match with Baszler at TakeOver. It's all good. Can you imagine what kind of horror show she would put on if she had to elevate Nia Jax to a good match? But the other part of that is you've got Nia Jax who's not ready and you've got NXT and the Performance Center who, who, where, which are developmental properties now you got Nia Jax who can't wrestle in there with people who can like Charlotte like Becky like Oscar like you know whoever else you want to mention and she's hurting them now you put her in a developmental class with people that haven't found their own feet yet you're gonna have people injured that haven't even gotten to step into their first arena yet and that is probably I'd, I'd wager to say that that's the scariest part of all of this is the damage she could do to the potential future of a division which is probably in the best spot it's ever been and you might not like who's the champion now you might not like how they're booked you might not like who's got what belt you might not agree with who's going to be the first ever women's tag titles you don't you know there's too many titles there's too few titles the women are getting too much exposure now you can have whatever you want but as a general statement the wwe has never had a women's division as flush as what it is right now you've got a raw title a smackdown title an nxt title an nxt uk title you've got the women's rumble you've got the women rep uh main possibly main eventing wrestlemania you've got the may young classic uh you've got their money in the bank they've really stepped up the game now part of that is because the talent have done it part of that is because wwe have finally gotten their heads out of their ass and let them do it but if you're going to put nia Jax back in developmental where these next rows of talent are coming from you're going to cut off so many people that haven't even seen nxt that haven't even seen their first dark match that haven't even scraped the surface of being in the ring with a champion let alone becoming a champion let alone defending that championship at wrestlemania um can you imagine if somebody like Nia Jax went to the Performance Center before Sasha Banks debuted? And I don't know what her real name is, but just, like, was in a random training exercise and broke Sasha Banks' neck and we never got to see Sasha Banks. Can you imagine if, like, okay, well, it wouldn't be Charlotte. Let's be real for a second. But anybody else that you like, you know, the, the entire um, 
creative direction of somebody like an, uh, Nikki Cross or uh, Ruby Riot, who doesn't get to show what she can do very often, but is uh, is counted on to do some stuff occasionally, like the match she had with Charlotte last year. Um, all of this is, is leaning in a very dangerous direction of, oh, just send her down back to NXT for a minute to tweak some stuff. No, all you're going to do is degrade NXT. Put her, send her over to the UK for a couple months. All you're going to do is degrade NXT UK because for the love of God, don't tell Tony Storm to try and carry a match with Nia Jax. There's so many better things you can do, like another match with Rhea Ripley, which apparently we're getting in a couple of weeks. My point is, I can't be the nice guy anymore that says, oh, just, you know, put her back into training, put her back into developmental. No, she's got to go. She's got to go. And there's arguments against her. Oh, well, we need... She brings a big element of, of heritage from such a long-standing family and, and whatever. And I, I get that. It's something that WWE does, doesn't need to lean on as much as they do. Because um, when they talk about her, her famous family now, it's like they're trying to make an excuse for why she's still here, which is a bad thing, if nothing else. But if you want to talk about The Rock's family, I think you got the Usos there. You've got Roman there. You know, Roman is what he is, but whatever. Uh, I believe you got Kona Reeves, who's distantly related to them somehow. Or you could talk about those current stars and, and bring more reference to the family that came before them. You don't need to say, we can't fire this girl because she's related to The Rock. And trust me, if Charlotte Flair was injuring this many people, I would say the same thing to her. All due respect to Ric Flair. But she's not, because she can wrestle. And the other thing, the last thing, is... She's become this big symbol of hope for these people that are shamed for how they look and they're not Barbie dolls and whatever. And no, you, you shouldn't. Absolutely not. Nobody in this world, I want to put this video out here, I want to put this thought out here right now. If you are in a situation, as she says she's been in, where, you know, you're picked on for your size, you don't look like, uh, you don't look like a supermodel, you don't look like a, like a Barbie doll, whatever. No, nobody should ever be made to feel like that. You should have heroes um, out there that that make you feel like you shouldn't be that, but there are other people that can do that. I mean, you had Karma, a.k.a. Awesome Kong, depending on what company you watched her in. You had Beth Phoenix and Natalia aren't exactly supermodels. They, they, they're they they're they're built, built, built bigger, stronger, whatever. We had China, may she rest in peace. Um, Piper Niven, uh, who was in the Mae Young Classic, who was absolutely phenomenal, and I hope she gets hired at one point. Put her in that position. Put somebody in a position to tell these, you know, young, impressionable kids and whatever, hey, just because you look like this doesn't mean you can't succeed, because Nia Jax hasn't succeeded. She is just a poster child. You put somebody like a Piper Niven or an Awesome Kong or a Beth Phoenix or, or somebody like that in that position, hey, I, I, I was picked on because I look like this, but I didn't let that get me down. I went, I still did what I needed to do. I still became as good as I needed to get to get here. But here I am showing that you can be this if you want to be this. Don't put out the message that, eh, well, if you're big and people have picked on you once or twice, then the world should be handed to you whether you're doing your job or not. That is another, that's right up there with, with injuring trainees as for how dangerous the message they're putting out there. Anyways, that's my thoughts on Nia Jax at the moment. She, she shouldn't be there anymore. That's that's really the end of it. I don't have a nice, you know, neat little trendy way to end this video. So I will say thank you guys for listening. I hope you guys are enjoying the Super Bowl, if that's what you're doing. If you're watching Halftime Heat, probably I'll, I'll be tw tweeting over there uh, when it happens. But knowing my luck, this video won't upload until tomorrow. Anyways, so thanks for listening to me ramble. I've been Spaz, your YWC reality check. Subscribe up there, talk down there, start a conversation. Keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger. I will talk to each and every last one of you later, but for right now, I am tagging out. Bye, guys. Don't shine,